Orthopedic surgeon and spinal expert Ohenibar Bauche Ajay has recently returned to his native Ghana to run his Focus Orthopedic Hospital. He's also looking towards the future. To become a spine surgeon takes about eight years postgraduate training. And to become proficient, probably take another five years or so after you've trained and qualified and you're in practice. So it's a long, long process. So the orthopedic surgeons in Ghana are not exposed much to spine surgery. Spinal deformities is a specialty that is only done in specialized centers abroad. And we have a country like Ghana where, you know, a country of 26 million people with maybe 20, 25 orthopedic surgeons and they see trauma every day. It's very difficult to really do spinal deformity surgery. So the institution that we have established here is really able to do all of this but then going forward we have to be able to train the next generation so my goal and my hope is that I can identify orthopedic neurosurgeons who are interested in pursuing this subspecialty of spine surgery and spine deformity surgery and we have residents now who have come along and there are few who will be coming subsequently who have expressed interest in pursuing careers in spine deformity surgery. Besides training the new generation of surgeons in Ghana, Balchi is fortunate to have had more than 500 volunteers help him at the hospital. You doing okay? Very good. And you too? Doing all right? Nice. Yeah, Tigis had surgery and uh, had a complication, but she's recovered. Yeah. Kissinet had one of the worst deformities. Patricia is an international volunteer from the United States. She's been here since eight years, right? Yeah, eight years. Yeah, eight years. Yeah, so he, she works with the children, also making sure the activities, the health, and, and Betty is also a retired uh, nurse practitioner from the U.S. She lives here. Yeah. And she keeps us out. She's our queen mother. <laughs> I have two queen mothers, My her and her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we have plenty of help. How are you, Abiot? How are you feeling? Feeling all right? Getting better? So you're gonna, so this girl, this young lady actually is uh, from Ethiopia and she couldn't walk when she came in. Yeah, she couldn't walk. So she had a spinal cord tumor that we operated on two weeks ago. Now she's beginning to stand. So she's going through rehab. This is my wife. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Nice to meet you. It's very pretty, isn't she? Do you have their prayer? Yes, sir. Do you have any? All, so all they, they're all waiting for surgery? Yes, sir. All these oh, my. That's a lot. We have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of work to do. For me in particular, being the head of the department and being the lead surgeon on all these cases, training other surgeons, I have to make sure that they are all encouraged, that they are all, um, you know, that we, we I build a confidence in them, but also make sure that we do no harm. So preparing for a case involves a lot of collaboration. So I study these cases day and night, go through the x-rays day and night, we conference on them day and night. I dream about them every day. <laughs> it's basically like preparing to go to war. You have to come up with a strategy. You know, or you're going to get killed. <laughs> so it's intense preparation and uh, to really prepare for these cases. And then when we're going, we have, I personally have really considered all options. I had to have plan A, plan B, and plan C, and a bailout plan and sometimes an exit plan or stopgap. So with all that in mind, people may not see it, but I have three plans in my head when I'm operating on these patients. And no two cases are the same. Compared to what I used to do in New York, where you know you have a sequence A, B, C, these cases are not the same. Everything is customized. 
and you have to play it based on the response and the feedback that you get from the spinal cord monitoring or the bleeding that is taking place. So there's a lot of intense preparation, but there's also a huge weight on us, on our shoulders, to make sure that we get through all these cases. And I'll say, for the most part, we do. Because I've trained so many other surgeons, except here, I don't see myself as a reality because I've been able to duplicate myself by training other surgeons to be able to do this work and that's all the continents. Uh, you may go anywhere, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Spain, Italy, Argentina, Brazil, France. I mean, I've trained people all over the world who can do this work. In Africa, though, yes, we are rare. I'm not happy that it's that way. I don't want to be like the only person who can do this. I'd rather have other four or five other people who can do this. I like to say we can do this, not just me. You know, I mean, I like we better than I. <laughs> and that's what I'm hoping that it will, be, it will get to, that I say that we at Focus can do this. We in Ghana and we in Africa can do this. Then to me, that would be my ultimate dream. So they can go from that wheelchair uh, to the walker. Hi, how are you?